In this video we're going to look at integration by parts and what we're going to do is look at a thing called the uh, uh, LIPT rule or the LIPIT rule. Okay, So what is this for? We'll just see what this is for first. So suppose we have a integration by parts question like this. Okay, And what we would do here is we would... S this is the general formula for integration by parts. It's usually in the back of exam papers or something like that. Or it's not, it's not too hard to remember. But what we would have to do here in this situation is either assign uh, assign u to one of these parts here, and then the other part would be the dv part. Okay, so we split it up. We have an expression like this up here, and we split it up into the du part and the dv part. Now the question is, which is which? So we've got two options in this case. So we could have x equal to u equal to x, or let's just make that a little bit bigger. u equal to x... I'm just trying to delete that. My pen's acting up. Pa, fuck it. Now. What? Yeah. So. Yeah, for the general joy. All right. So essentially, what I'm going to do here is what we do here is let u equal to x and let dv equal to uh, the, the, the rest of it, not including the integral sign, e to the x dx. Now that's one sort of possible uh, thing we could do. The other one is we can let e to the x equal to u, or u equal to e to the x, and that, that means the remainder is x dx. Okay. Now from that you will find du and v and then solve it. Okay. But it's really important to, to get this step right. So get which combination right. If you do it one way, it can be much simpler than doing it the other way. So um, that is it, really. So uh, what? How do we do that? So we use this thing called the Leipzig rule. I'm not going to get into a sort of a comparison of one versus the other. It just takes too long. So this is a sort of a sort of tells us the Leipzig rule is which order do we select U? Okay. So if we have an option, uh, two options are, which we tend always have in integration by parts, which one is u? So there's a sort of precedence here. And the first order of precedence is the logarithm. So if there's a logarithm uh, in as one part and something else as the other part, we usually uh, assign u to the logarithm. Then the inverse trigonometric, okay, for something like cos to the minus 1, uh, after that, in the order of precedence will be the polynomials, x, x squared, x cubed, and so on. Then the exponentials, e to the, x, e to the 2x, e to the minus x, stuff like that. But also things like the hyperbolic functions, okay? They're actually uh, uh, fundamentally exponential. Okay, you, you already see them in exam papers, but they, they are um, exponentials, and they would sort of fit in there, okay? So... Uh, after that, the last one is the trigonometric ones, cos and sine x and so on. Okay, so let's have a look at the example here. So this is the one we sort of used earlier. So uh, p is a polynomial and this is an exponential. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to set up u as x, uh, du is equal to d over dx is equal to 1, and so on. I'm not going to finish it, but there, there, that's how you do it. dv is e to the x dx, and to calculate v, you just integrate that. The integral of e to the x dx, and so on. Okay, so that's uh, e, uh, p. Uh, remember, it's Lipit like that. Okay, so that's example 1. What about this one here? Well, x squared. Now, this would actually be a tough one to do in... It'll, it'll take a while to get through this, but this is how you sort of set it up. x squared is a polynomial, and this part... It's missing a dx, by the way. This part here, cos x, is trigonometric. Okay, so again, u is equal to x squared, and so on. Find du. And cos x is the dv part. So dv is equal to cos x dx, and so on. Okay. Next one. 
uh, x log of x, x times log of x dx. Now, here what we have is we have a polynomial and we have a logarithm. So in this particular situation, what happens here is we let u equal to log of x and work that out and dv is x times dx and work that out. Okay. Now, it would take, uh, actually probably take quite a while to actually get through this. You might have to do multiple steps of integration by parts, but that's have you have it sort of set up right to begin with. Uh, one more, x times cos minus 1 of x. So here we would have a polynomial and here we have an inverse trigonometric. Okay, so again u is equal, or u is whichever one comes first in our Lipid order u is equal to cos minus 1 of x and dv again is x times dx and solve that. Now again quite a hard example for a, a pen and paper example. It sort of that does still sort of demonstrate how it would work with um, the Lipert rule. So just to get it started right. So that is the Lipert rule and just a couple of examples and we'll leave it there.